United States of America. He distinguished himself in academics, leadership, and sports, establishing a record as the first to achieve in four straight years as brigade boxing champion since the academy was established in 1845. He earned his master's degree in business administration at the University of the Philippines, where he graduated as class valedictorian. He as well had three academic years leading to AB political science in the same university. He served as representative of Paranaque City for six terms, elected in landslide victories in one of the longest record services in the history of the House of Representatives. He was the head of the House contingent to the Commission on Appointments and as chairman of two key committees, Committee on National Defense and Committee on Public Order. For three years, he has been the Postmaster General of the Philippines, where he received the prestigious and outstanding Young Men, and o Young Men Award for Public Service Excellence, being a member of the Philippine Cabinet. He is among the vanguard in the citizens' movement to fight for sovereign rights in our exclusive economic zone in the face of China's incursions and illegal presence in the West Philippine Sea. And he was the founder of the Kapasisi Il Movement and one of the three lead conveners in the West Philippine Sea Coalition. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome the former National Security Advisor and the Of course, uh, our neighbor decided 
to assert their nine dash line, no coordinates, no legal basis, and this was repudiated by the ruling of the arbitral tribunal. And this is the nine dash line, which intrudes into about 90% of our exclusive economic zone, together with the EEC of Malaysia, Brunei, and also Vietnam. The first move was uh, the seizure of uh, Misty Creek. They said it's only for temporary shelter, but then in 1999, they converted that into a permanent shelter and much bigger today. They grabbed Scarborough Shoal in April 2012, which is a very strategic uh, area. I'm going to discuss that later. It is the duty of the state, it is not just the right, but the duty of the state to protect the nation's marine wealth in its archipelagic waters, territorial sea, and exclusive economic zone, and deserve its use and enjoyment exclusively to Filipino citizens. That is a duty of the state. As discussed already on January 22, we filed our arbitral proceedings against the People's Republic of China under Article Annex 7 of the UNCLUS, and uh, this is the Permanent Court of Arbitration. On July 12, 2016, the Republic of the Philippines was awarded a favorable decision in general by the Permanent Court of Arbitration, and this was uh, very exhaustively discussed by uh, Admiral Garcia, Joel Garcia. And the announcement of the Arbitral Tribunal was greeted with the uh, uh, celebration by the people as uh, evidenced by the headlines that uh, came out the following day. Headline, Philippine Star, Philippine Daily Inquirer, Manila Bulletin, etc., etc. It was good news, and it was supposed to be a game changer. The South China Sea Rule is supposed to be a game changer to reconfigure the games they should play in the South China Sea. However, China immediately announced that they would accept the Hague Sovereignty Arbitration. And uh, this was uh, manifestly uh, announced uh, by their uh, Department of their Ministry of Foreign Affairs that they would not, uh, they even said that they would not participate and would not accept the arbitration even before uh, we considered filing the case. And in fact, on the eve of uh, the announcement of the ruling of the Arbitral Tribunal, they made, they did a very provocative act by sending a strategic bomber to pass the area of Scarborough Shoal. Uh, this was uh, widely publicized also. And of course, uh, this uh, indicates that they're ready to up the ante. The ruling of the Arbitral Tribunal was uh, met with a lot of support from various world leaders. We, there's the United States, Australia, said support, uh, New Zealand, Japan, India, Vietnam also expressed support with some uh, 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 some uh, uh, reservations, but they were very supportive of uh, Iraq, although not officially. But uh, President Duterte announced a shift in Philippine foreign policy. And he said that uh, he was already reconsidering and reviewing the U.S.-Philippine military alliance. And he was uh, going to start dealing with China, Russia in the pipeline. And in this particular case, I uh, support this in principle because I think we really have to have a diversified and independent foreign policy, not focused on one country, not focused on one region. And he announced that he wanted to forge closer ties with China as well as uh, Russia. And uh, even announced that the 2016 Philippines-US Balikatan War Games would be the last uh, that was the announcement, of course, but after a few weeks, this was uh, uh, revised a little by the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, probably realizing that uh, there were some serious complications as far as uh, uh, treaty obligations are concerned. The president went to China, accompanied by many businessmen, on an economic uh, trip. And after that, uh, he came back 
with a very good package, $24 billion economic package from China, which is uh, one of the favorable, one of the positive parts of re-engaging with China. Because China has a huge economy, and uh, by engaging with China economically, we will benefit from that huge economy, $24 billion. Now I'd like to talk about the massive destruction of coral reefs. This was mentioned already by Dr. J. Matumbakal. An expert, Professor John McManus, a leading marine biologist who analyzed the images, the uh, reclamation going on, announced that the loss of thousands of acres of reef in recent years constitutes the quickest rate of permanent loss of coral reef area in human history. Now, what is the strategic significance of Scarborough Shoal? Uh, I'd like to talk about Scarborough Shoal, which is one of the very important strategic parts of the West Philippine Sea and the South China Sea. By the way, if we talk of security and stability, we cannot limit ourselves to the West Philippine Sea. It is not just the South China Sea. We have to expand to a bigger area, the Asia Pacific area, and now the Indo Pacific area. I'm going to discuss that also. Well, we all know the, the, the geography of Scarborough Shoal, only about 219 kilometers uh, from Sambales and about 857 kilometers from the southernmost island of uh, China, which is Hainan. But for some reason, they're saying that Scarborough Shoal is theirs. In our discussions in various think tank groups that I participate in, in the Philippines and also in Japan, we identified a master plan for Scarborough Shoal, purportedly by China. And you can see that this is quite an intricate uh, master plan. You know, the first time they showed the master plan for Pine Cross, I found it a little incredible because it was very intricate until it started becoming a reality. So now, I'm not saying that this is a uh, Impossible. I think this is quite doable as far as the construction capability of China is concerned. And this lagoon here, some people might think that this is quite a, just a dot in the middle of the ocean. The size of the lagoon is about 150 square kilometers, almost the size of Quezon City. So you can imagine how big that area is. Now, in my discussions uh, with various think tank groups internationally, I first run into the concept of the strategic triangle. What uh, we have found out is that the objective of China is to develop this strategic triangle consisting of three points. The first point is the Paracels, already finished. The second point is the cluster of Atibisa Islands uh, uh, in the South China Sea, uh, very close to us, consisting of Pirate Cross, Subi, and of course, this Creek, almost uh, finished. And then the third point is Carbore Show. I already showed you the master plan. If they succeed in doing that, they will have this strategic triangle. And if uh, they're able to militarize all these three points, they will have a full control of the South China Sea. That would be the strategic significance of Carbore Show. And that will be going to be very important in the geostrategic situation, geopolitical situation, not only in the South China Sea, but the entire Indo-Pacific area. Now, what is the status of the China-controlled islands and artificial islands? Well, here's the Ch South China Sea. Uh, I think we're all familiar with the relative uh, uh, locations of the artificial islands. The Johnson South Reef, Missy Reef is inside our exclusive economic zone. All the rest are outside. Fire Cross is a little outside. The big ones are Subi, Fire Cross, and the Missy Reef, each of which has a uh, three kilometer runway. And uh, these are brief descriptions of the kind of facilities that they have. Practically all of them have the early warning uh, air defense radar, three kilometer runway, lighthouse anti-air uh, guns, etc., etc. And Pirate Cross. This was the original uh, status of Pirate Cross with the uh, little structure before. And then in just a matter of about two years, they have this uh, very intricate uh, 
you can see that uh, uh, development there already. They have a big hardware, a small hardware here, and a 3 kilometer 